Facebook. Good evening. Uh, my name is Deepa Kuni, and I'm a software developer at uh, Lawrence Berkeley National Labs. And the title of my talk is Knowledge Graph Exchange. Uh, can I control from here? OK. Right. Awesome. So I'm sure almost everyone here is familiar with what a knowledge graph is. But just to give a, a small background, uh, knowledge graphs are pretty much a, a way of representing data, where in a graph, uh, you have nodes representing entities and edges representing the relationship between these entities. And they're a good way of representing biological data um, or you know, in, highly interconnected data. And a good example is biological data. And often, knowledge graphs are property graphs, um, and which are different from RDF graphs in that the, even edges have properties. And there are many ways of representing, um, oh, sorry, there are many knowledge graphs out there, uh, especially that have biological data. For example, a uh, few examples are HetioNet, Monarch, and SemetDB, just to name a few. And if you look at these graphs, you would know that there are more than one way of uh, uh, naming nodes uh, or entities, and there are more than one way of naming relationships or edges between entities. And we kind of noticed that in the context of the NCATS Biomedical Data Translator Project, where there are different groups that have their own knowledge graphs, which integrate data from different sources. And each of these, um, and then the question was, how would you get these uh, different knowledge graphs to interoperate with each other? Uh, and the idea was to have these different groups agree to use the same kind of data model to, to name and uh, refer to the same nodes and uh, or entities and relationships. Which brings us to the BioLink model. Uh, it is a high-level data model for representing biological entities and their associations. It defines core biological types like gene, disease, phenotype, or phenotypic feature. And it also defines a taxonomy of relationship between these biological types, like gene-to-gene -gene association, gene-to-disease associations, and so on. Um, the model itself is defined in a YAML file, which is then consumed uh, by scripts and generators to create uh, um, the documentation, uh, the JSON schema and uh, the RDF total. So, but another challenge is that not all knowledge graphs are represented the same. There are some that uh, rely on a label property graph store like Neo4j, whereas others uh, are more of uh, an RDF triple store. So, how do we abstract the process of accessing these knowledge graphs while ensuring interoperability? How do we allow, enable a way so that you can share knowledge graphs or subgraphs? And how do we uh, enable a way of combining these knowledge graphs together just to get a subset that is relevant to your research. Uh, with this, with these challenges in mind, we developed KGX, which is uh, a tool for that allows you to perform operations on uh, these on one or more knowledge graphs. Uh, these operations are uh, read, download, upload, validate, and merge. And these are um, so KGX itself enforces that the knowledge graph that communicates with are compliant with the BioLink model. And KGX provides transformers for uh, communicating with uh, these uh, different knowledge graphs. And there's one that uh, allows you to communicate with a Neo4j instance and another for uh, an RDF triple store. And it also provides a framework for extending these existing transformers so that you can write your own um, implementation-specific transformers. So the goal for the hackathon is to see what other groups are doing for representing biological knowledge, to see if there's um, any interest in adopting BioLink model for your own knowledge graphs. Uh, find synergies with other groups, and then also, you know, work on the laundry list of things that I have to do for KGX. Uh, these are some of the resources, well, um, which includes the GitHub URL and the documentation. And I would like to thank um, um, all the members of the NCATS uh, Data Translator Project, and as well as uh, the Monarch Initiative for their contributions, uh, leadership, and support. And I would also like to thank uh, the organizers, organizers of the Biohackathon for inviting me over and allowing me to talk about my work. Thank you.